first vlog of the new year. <laughs> hey, how are we? I hope you guys had a fun and safe New Year's Eve. And um, yeah, thought I'd start a reading vlog this week. I've been a lazy lump. I've literally been in bed for two days. And when I say like I've been in bed, I literally have not left my bedroom. <laughs> I've just been doing a lot of just lounging and reading and catching up on all my tube favorites and my trashy TV. I had a very hectic um, like New Year's, so I'm just happy to be back home, just relax. But today I thought, okay girl, we gotta get out of bed. We have to be productive. There's things to be done. So here we are. I am off to the library to return. Uh, Dear Senthrin, which I've talked about. We did a whole reading vlog together. <laughs> and I feel bad for holding this hostage for as long as I did. I should have returned it before I went away because I'm sure there's a hold for this. So I'm quickly running to the library to do that and see what other goodies I can find in there. I haven't gone in a hot minute and I love a good trip to the library. Mm, I'm very excited. <laughs> so I'm gonna do that. But also I, yesterday, I decided to do some uh, like shelving, reorganizing slash purging, not even purging, just getting, sifting through all my books and just seeing what is relevant and what I just don't really wanna keep anymore. I try to be quite intentional with the books that I have up there. I want them to all have some sort of meaning or, you know, yeah, to mean something to me. So I decided to get rid of some books. They're not, like some of them are bad and I try and not keep anything that I didn't like, but it's mostly just books that were relevant to me a long time ago and I just don't have any attachment to them anymore. So I'm just like, why am I keeping these books? First one that I did not like and I had such high expectations for this book is uh, called We Cast a Shadow by Maurice Carlos Rufin. Blurred by Roxanne Gay. I had heard such great things. Actually, a bookseller recommended this to me, so I was like, yes, and it was a big no. <laughs> I And I kept pushing through, but it just kept on getting worse and making me want to stop. But at the time, I was a naive little girl, and I was like, no, we bought this, we must finish. But nowadays, I'm just like DNFing if I need to. So yeah, I don't even know why I had that up there, but this is certainly leaving my house. And the other one that I also just did not vibe with was White Teeth by Zadie Smith. I'm sorry, Zadie stands, but at least this book was just not for me. I made it to like the 50 page mark and it was just still not captivating. I did not like the writing and I DNF'd it. <laughs> and I just don't think I'm gonna pick it up, so I'm getting rid of her. And then I've got a bunch of like psychological thrillers because there was a phase in my life like four years ago that that's exclusively what I read. It was mostly when I was in college because it was like a form of like escapism and it wasn't anything like theory based or nothing that I had to like think really critically or hard about because that's mostly what I did in my undergrad. <laughs> so for my free time, this is the kind of stuff I liked to read. But nowadays my reading tastes have changed and I feel like I can occupy the space that these books were holding in my library now with things that are important to me in a current context. So the first one I'm getting rid of is Her Every Fear by Peter Swanson. Now I really liked Peter Swanson. So if you, if this is the kind of book that you're into, I would suggest looking uh, into this author because I do like his work, but just not something I'm reading at the moment. So we're getting rid of her. Uh, then I have The Woman in the Window, which I also really liked. And then we have In a Dark, Dark Wood, which I thought was okay because I read The Woman in Cabin 10 and it was also like, okay. It was like a page turner, but I've read better. And uh, The Wife Between Us. And I don't remember anything about this book. <laughs> Maybe I didn't even read it. I don't know, but we're getting rid of her too. So yeah, that's pretty much it. I will, um, actually no, I'll show you what I've done with my shelves because I did do a bit of reorganizing. So hang tight. Okay, so the bottom 
bit here was occupied by Charlie's books, but if you can't tell, this is my side of the shelf and this is his. So I just moved the stuff that was there over there. So I have more room to put some of my books in that bottom shelf there. I added another, so this bookcase comes with a bunch of these like wooden shelves and I just placed them in this order because that's what was appealing to us, but I decided to add another one so that I can have more shelving for hopefully all the books I'll be reading or wanting to buy, I guess, in 2022. And then I moved this one down a little bit. And yeah, I think it looks really nice as well. Let me just back up a little. So lots of room and I'm excited to fill her up. <laughs> Oh my gosh, wow. It's cold out there, folks. <laughs> I just got home. I had a lovely little walk. Like I said, very chilly because there's still some snow out there. Yeah, just what I needed to after hibernating for two days at home. <laughs> I did go to the library and it was a successful little outing because I got a couple things. First thing, coffee for Charlie. <laughs> Okay, uh, what we're really here for. Oh, look who it is. Look who wants to say hi. The kitty. He's been sleeping the whole day, but now that I'm home, he's come out of his cave. <laughs> but um, anyway, so yeah, it was a very successful trip. I dropped off the books that I wanted to drop off and I picked these two up. So the first one, honestly, I don't know very much about it, but I just know the name. I know somebody out there, one of my friends has talked about this book. I don't know from who, but it's Summer Water by Sarah Moss. And I saw it and it seemed like a short little read and I grabbed it. So we've got this. And this was 1000% influenced by Jalen from The Barn of the Bookcase because I just watched his um, like 2021 favorites and this of course was in there and I was sold. <laughs> and it's uh, Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor and I was in the mood for short stories so this was kind of perfect and I'm really glad they had that. So that was my little uh, library haul. I'm probably going to either start Filthy Animals right now because that's kind of what I'm in the mood for or read uh, White is for Witching, which is the book that I started last night, like I said. So, yeah. So we have been reading White is for Witching and I thought right now would be a good time to do a little update because I'm uh, around the halfway mark and this is so engrossing. The story is very compelling, very eerie. There's something uncanny going on, but you don't know really anything. <laughs> What a talented individual. The writing is crazy. I mean, the way that this author is able to convey such an eerie, like suspenseful, but also very lyrical prose and craft this at general atmosphere is super, super impressive. Like just even the first page really sucked me in and it just keeps on getting better and better and better and I can't wait to see where the story goes. I think there's gonna be some very unexpected twists and turns. But basically the story is set in Dover, England and we follow a family that lives in this beautiful, I picture it like a very beautiful old, like a Victorian home in the middle of the woods. 
This house has been owned by the same family for years and years and years. And the current tenants of the house are a family, uh, Luke, Lily, and their twin um, kids, uh, Elliot and Mar Miranda, Miri for short. And we predominantly hear from the perspective of both of the kids as well as the voice of the house itself like something weird is happening in this house also the relationship between <laughs> elliot and miri is very peculiar and i the author hasn't like explicitly said anything but i get like incest vibes <laughs> Now, I don't know if, uh, what that has to say about me and my perverse mind <laughs> because nowhere in the pages has there been any sort of like insinuation that they're doing something um, incestuous, but that's the feeling I get for whatever reason. Call me crazy. Um, but yes, yeah, so things are happening in this house and they, some of the characters, primarily Miri, has these weird quirks um for a lack of a better term and to not like spoil anything but she quite a peculiar young girl they're both getting ready to go off to college so the kids are quite a bit older and as we are navigating this their life in this seemingly haunted house perhaps <laughs> another main like plot point is that lily the kid's mother has mysteriously passed away and we are not told what exactly happened to lily we just know that it is her family that has owned this house that they live in in dover for um hundreds of years so dating back to like the great great grandmother and we get a little bit of like family history through citations of past inhabitants of the house uh, meaning the um, miranda and elliot's great grandmother their grandmother their mother living in this house and now them and they've converted this house into a bed and breakfast so there's also this new woman that comes in um, to help the dad run the bed and breakfast and i think some spooky shit is going to go down with this <laughs> with this new character that's um, entered the house but yes i am really enjoying it like i said the writing is so mysterious and there's just some really beautiful sentences as well as just great words <laughs> i'm really pleased with picking this book as my helen oyeyemi introduction as well as just the first full book that i'm starting in the new year this is um quite a a good place to start off i must say also oh my gosh big update do we remember the book that i was looking for in my last reading vlog, also by the same author. Well, I found it. So after calling literally every independent bookstore in the city, one sweet person told me to look up Abe Books and that's where they find any book that they seem to um, get their hands on. And so I took their suggestion and sure enough, I found it there from a random independent store in the UK that had it for $8. So yes, that is what I did. So hoping that I'll get it at some point in January, that would be great. And continue on my Helen Oyeyemi journey because that book I'm equally as excited to read, especially now after consuming after being halfway through this one and being blown away by the writer's imagination, her capacity to build this super eerie um, tone and environment, like I said, and beautiful prose. So really enjoying it. Can't wait to see where the story goes. And I kind of want to finish it today. I mean, I we've literally been quarantining, so <laughs> there's not much to do other than just read and drink my tea and pace around my house and pet my cat. <laughs> so Charlie got back and um, he's like convinced he has COVID despite his four negative COVID tests. So just to be safe, we're quarantining and then taking another test in a few days. But I feel great and I'm just chilling reading my book. <laughs> so that's what I'll continue to do. I just wanted to come on here and give you a little brief update as well as just talk about the book because I think I mentioned it in passing that I was reading it, but we didn't dive on in. So, so good. So, so good. I think I may have COVID. Yes, you heard it right, folks. I think I got the Micron. 
the Omicron bug has caught up to me. Now, I don't know. I've just been isolating and I'm gonna continue to isolate uh, for 10 days. But yes, I, Charlie got back from seeing his family and he was like anxious cause he didn't feel great, but he took like two antigen tests and at home tests and a PCR and they all came back negative. But um, when he got back into Canada, he took a, another PCR test and looks like they lost it <laughs> cause it's been like seven days and there's still no results. So, I don't know what happened there. But anyway, he feels totally fine now. Me, on the other hand, can't really say the same. I mean, today I feel the best I felt since I started to feel unwell. So that's good. But um, yeah, I've just been super achy. Like, I've just been feeling super weak. So I've just been in bed literally like for the past two days. And therefore, I haven't really been doing a whole lot of reading because it's just really tiresome. I know it sounds silly, but like holding up a book and trying to like focus on words and reading is just a little too much. But I have asked Charlie to read for me, so that was really nice. I, ha I ha technically have been making some progress, but um, it's been a little rough, not gonna lie. Uh, I've been wanting to like film. I wanted to do my wrap up for December, but the energy has been at an all time low, sadly. Okay, I wanted to come over here because during my time in isolation, I've had to look at my bookcase for an extra long time and I did some more purging. I'm getting rid of The Girl on the Train and this book, which I can't believe is still in my house. <laughs> Worst reads of 2021. <laughs> And also Celeste Ng, uh, Everything I Never Told You. I read this ages ago and like it was fine, but again, doesn't mean anything to me now. Uncanny Valley, also known as Uncringy Valley, thanks to Anna. I'm gonna link that video down below because it was so freaking funny. <laughs> I laughed from beginning to end. Um, she did like worst books of 2021 or like cringiest books. And this was like her top nonfiction pick. And I could not agree more. This book was such a letdown. <laughs> Anyways, and then the rest also are uh, Charlie's uh, on haul. So uh, yeah, it was very good. We, it had to be done. We needed to do this. So we piled a few. We figured we could go to a used bookstore that we really like and try and get some credit. And um, yeah, that is, the, that is the new plan for the new uh, unhaul, I guess you could say. And um, yeah, I'm just gonna do some reading today because I, like I said, I feel much better. But I'm just gonna take it easy. So sorry if you don't see my face for a little bit. I just have like no energy to edit or film anything too um, like demanding of my of my brain and brain power to try and sound eloquent. <laughs> so yes, but I'm I'm feeling okay. I'm lucky that I'm double vaxxed. It could be a lot worse, and I'm in the comfort of my own home. I have all my needs met and I've got my little kitty to keep me company and Charlie too. I also figured I would show for anyone who cares <laughs> some home updates. I got this beautiful woven situation from my dad for Christmas and I just absolutely love it. It's from Mexico and it's um, technically supposed to be like a rug situation, but he <clears throat> cut out a huge circle of plywood and stuck it on there so I could hang it up and it just looks beautiful. I am a slut for anything woven, if you can tell. <laughs> Can't uh, see a theme here. Um, so yes, I've put that up in the hallway and I just think it looks absolutely stunning. Brings me so much joy to look at it every day. And I also hung up this little guy this print I got when I went to Montreal with my mom and I just really love it. I got it for Charlie and I found this old frame and framed it a long time ago, but I think it looks really cute kind of in this corner here, um, close to my kitchen. And then actually here too, this is one of my dad's 
pieces just kind of funky um little shape there that we decided to hang up and another oh and charlie's dad knows that i too love collecting uh pottery i've been collecting these uh over the years mostly from people's trash <laughs> and uh he gave me this big boy that matches the blue theme super well and i love it that's like the mama bear and um yeah and then last but not least my dad also made us this for christmas um he's a wood sculpture artist and i love it i think it looks really beautiful kind of tucked away in this little corner so yeah those are the random home updates in case anybody was wondering or into home decor <laughs> um yeah and then the shelves that i showed earlier which i'm super happy with and i can't wait to fill them up good morning sorry my voice sounds fucked <laughs> A, I haven't talked much this morning, but also I'm still recovering from COVID, question mark. Like, I don't even know. Like, my PCR said I'm negative, but I still don't feel great. So I'm just self-isolating just in case. But anyways, I wanted to hop on here because I have a burst of energy and figured I would wrap this very uneventful vlog up, so I apologize for that. But I did finish A White is for Witching by Helen Oyeyemi. And I honestly have nothing but great things to say. That book really impressed me with what the author was trying to do. It's such a powerful little book and touches on so many different themes and within the scope of like a gothic like horror tale I guess you could say although it's like I would say it's like a chill horror <laughs> like nothing crazy happens or uh, nothing super grotesque um, takes place but it was just a beautifully told story it was so dreamy and lyrical like I've said a bunch of times at this point really experimental in form <coughs> excuse me which might be off-putting for some like there would be <clears throat> a switch in povs within the same sentence by using this like fragmentary uh like form i guess you could say i'm not explaining it great but uh it's a book that you have to be an active reader because she's not making it easy for you like you need to figure out whose perspective we're hearing from because in the book like i said we hear from the twins the house itself and or 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 a uh, miri's girlfriend or love interest from college is another dominant voice in there i thought that was so unusual and something i'd never seen before just the a sudden shift of, of perspective like I said so I thought that was interesting and um, yeah it was also nice to hear between the different characters in the book because they all have such distinct tones and way of retelling the story especially from or 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 a uh, it was just nice to that Helen Oyeyemi kind of included a little glimpse of you know your first love and queer love when you go up to college and but then again through the lens of like horror she or kind of gets a front row seat to Miranda's sudden decline and how much the house has consumed her and therefore um leads to uh tragic end um, I don't think I'm spoiling anything by saying that because the first page of the book tells you exactly what, what's gonna happen um, and another thing that I don't think I've I've touched on is what Helen Oyeyemi does with the house itself the house is very xenophobic and we see that through the mechanisms that the house uses to push away the other uh, whether that is Sage, the African housekeeper, or any guests, or even, or themselves. So I saw that as a way for Helen Oyeyemi to make a statement about um, the English immigration policies, especially where the house, <coughs> pardon me, especially where the house is located 
in Dover, that being the first point of contact for many folks trying to immigrate um, to the UK or Europe at large. Helena Yemi is one smart lady that was doing so many cool things in this book and it's definitely worth a reread because you could focus or you could read the book through different uh, perspectives and get something new or kind of excavate further into what it was that Helen was trying to do with certain choices. Like I said, everything's very intentional. Where the house is located in Dover, the things the house does to the other, uh, even Miranda's own crippling eating disorder, Heika, she has a appetite for non-edible things, predominantly chalk and plastic. So it was just, <coughs> it was just incredibly engrossing, like I mentioned, and I highly recommend you to pick it up if you want something a bit out of your comfort. It's not a, a genre, I guess you could say, that I typically read, but it was very compelling and I thoroughly enjoyed it. So yeah, that is my very jumbled <laughs> review of White is for Witching. Can't wait for the opposite house to arrive in the mail and for me to dive on into the magical worlds that I feel like Helen Oyeyemi is such a master at creating. And uh, yeah, for now I'm reading, where is it? Ugh. Filthy Animals by Brandon Taylor. And this should be interesting because I freaking hated real life. <laughs> I really did not like that book, but I appreciate Brandon Taylor and I've read other of his publications. So I wanted to give his other novel a go and I'm enjoying it. I'm only, it's a <clears throat> interwoven short stories, but I've only read the first one, but I did enjoy it. So looking forward to getting through more of this. And yeah, that's all I have on my end. I also wanted to say a huge thank you because I realized I, 2,000 of you are subscribed and watch, and that is a lot for me. <laughs> and I just feel really humbled, so thank you so much. Um, <clears throat> I think I might film a 2K Q&A, so if you have any questions for me, whether they're bookish or not, let me know. You can leave them downstairs or just DM me on the gram, whatever you like. <laughs> And yeah, I will hopefully see you soon with a bit higher spirits and not coughing every five seconds. But uh, yeah, I hope you're having a really beautiful start to the new year and I will see you all very soon. Bye.